After Slick Rock, Peter Burnover, that was the end of that. Real research went on from then on. But I think it went over there. <laughs> 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 did I answer what you wanted? Yes, you did. Okay. Yes, you did. Yeah. John, one of the many wonderful things I find in your book from a science perspective was the structured interviews you did and accumulated the database where not just a bunch of stories, but consistency of characteristics that you cleared about. How did you decide to do that? Did you come up with that on your own or suggest it to you? I think that seemed a natural thing to do when you're trying to, to learn about something. I think it's a monumental contribution where you, I think one of the chapters you have, which you call, I think it's titled, What is a Sasquatch? Where you go through sort of the cross classification. Just a wonderful piece of science writing. Yeah, I, I used to uh, put things on uh, wild cards in the beginning. Not right in the beginning. The beginning was totally unstructured. Gradually. Make a file card for each incident and it was harder than I'm saving and I'm loosely finding the detail of that. Then I started putting things on the map. The markers on the map weren't just pins, they had number, size, time of day, a lot of stuff you could just, if you had the key to it, you could read out the map. Then when the computer age came in, actually before the computer age, they were called the American National Enterprise, and they wanted to get it. It sounds like a movie of their own. They were negotiating with Roger, the judge in the title. And I wanted to do a computer survey, so I handled that. And after we had several hundred reports, you know, done on punch cards, and I don't know what happened after that. I do know that when we went to the University of BC, where they were recording this on the mainframe, uh, somebody had to run down the basement and get a big tape and put it up somewhere on the computer. Uh, and it only took us an hour or two to realize that we didn't have enough. Be a, a couple hundred questions on, on, on a form of ten answers. Wow. Yes. Well, well, John, what was your most uh, exciting thing that happened to you in your years of Sasquatch? What is there anything that really stands out that you really enjoyed or had the most excitement with? Yeah. I was trying to get down to Bluff Creek from the Cedar Hill Camp Road, which is on the opposite side from where the regular road is. Driving an old Ford station wagon on, a, on, on an abandoned road, and I went around the right angle corner and came up upon a log about this thing right across the road. And it was the middle of the night, and I had an old uh, part of a logger saw on this log in my car. And I had to get out there in the dark. Woods, woods behind me where all the Sasquatches were in the <laughs> <laughs> I made an indelible impression. <laughs> the other thing is, I couldn't go back. It was too steep. I had to go up, get down, and turn around. <laughs> Well, I grew up with the Sasquatch, and it, you know, and it was supposed to be a giant Indians with long head hair. And they had fires and they had villages. Uh, and then we started. And by the way, the, in, the Indians are not to blame for this because when when they had a big Sasquatch Day celebration here 
back in the 1940s, the Indians contributed the Sasquatch and it was totally covered with fur and didn't have long hair. So they knew what they were talking about. But the, you know, the overall community didn't. So again, I've lost track of where I'm going. I, I was wondering, what was your own personal opinion on, on the phenomenon? Well, I didn't have any idea personally until I talked to some witnesses and they, they described something much more like an ape than a human. Okay. And, uh, then after I saw the footprints in the hard sand, it was obviously something that, that weighed many times what a human weighed. I, I, I couldn't make, make a complete footprint just to heal. We didn't have a tread on our boots in those days. All, all of the sole was just a, a flat area with no edges. And I'm just beside these tracks that you know, we've seen some here that sink in like that. Mm -hmm. And that's you know that's what really settled things. I've been trying to find out ever since what makes those tracks. Nobody to this day has uh, produced any way that humans can do it. You know, the big alternative in this whole subject is, is it an animal or a, is it a, a human activity that's involved? Human activity won't explain anything unless you haven't looked at it. Yeah, it seems more, seems more. John, did you have to um, debate with yourself very much about becoming the public person who's going to stand up and say, hey, there's something out here? Or did you, you know, really consider that a lot? Or did you just do it? Yeah, that didn't bother me. I'm big-headed. Do you think you paid a price for that? Do you think you paid a price? No, I had a ball. <laughs> Maybe the luckiest thing that ever happened to me is that when I first went down to California and saw footprints, my wife was with me. And, you know, she's gone along with all this nonsense. <laughs>
hear these cracks in this hard sound. And the impact is with me to this day. Yeah, this is real. Mm -hmm. 